What's going on you guys? Theo here with the big review back yet again with another big review. If you guys are new to the channel and do not know, we do these every Sunday, so make sure you smash that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss another daily King of Fighters upload. But let's go ahead and this week take a look at probably the most hype character that has been released in a very, very long time for a lot of people, and also to a tad bit of controversy. So before we jump into this, I do want to preface it with letting you guys know if you missed yesterday's video, this character being Awakened Level 5 is new. For me, this just happened yesterday, so obviously most of this footage was taken while he was awakened level 40. So, if that makes a difference to you, sorry, but I wasn't going to re-record an entire video, especially a review, and also, he doesn't it doesn't make a huge difference. So, let's go ahead and jump into things, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the core effects. So, first thing I want to mention is he does have a 30% power charge rate increase on his core, which is obviously kind of stupid. But that is going to be one thing I did want to mention about his other cores up here. As you can see, he is going to have a lot of attack and skill enhances to things that are going to deal damage, like his attack, his crit rate, his strike skill attack damage, blast skill attack damage, so on and so forth. He has a lot of penetration. So this character is basically all about damage ramp and nuking. So first things first, let's talk about his two exclusive cores. So, the King of Fighters 97, level 3, is going to increase attack by 4% and penetration by 200 for 5 seconds for each attack. That's going to stack up to 5, and he's going to get 10% power when his combo count is 20 or above. So, a lot of defense shred there, a lot of, again, attack buffs, so again, more damage ramp for his kit. Then on to Orochi Syndrome, 50% chance to reset the cooldown of his blast active skills upon landing his S3, and it has a cooldown of 20 seconds. And then obviously he is going to have the Boss Syndrome exclusive core, which gives him 1% power every 0.3 seconds in guard stance, and a PvP exclusive that gives him super armor for 2 seconds when accumulated attack received guard included reaches 5 times on a cooldown of 20 seconds. Whew, that's a lot. So, 50% chance to reset the skill cooldowns of two of his three skills is very strong with using his S3. So, not much to be said there. It's very, very strong, especially since he's giving himself a lot of blast damage increase. Uh, his boss syndrome core, again, is very good. It's just another one of these effects that we've seen in the past where you get power charge whenever you're guarding. So, it's always a good thing to have on a kit. And then the PvP exclusive, giving him super armor for two seconds when his accumulated attack received reaches five times, is also really, really strong because it means that it's going to be tough to combo him. So, that all being said, let's move on to his skills. On his S1, he is going to have increased damage received by 50% for three seconds. And then he is also going to have his PvP exclusive disables the target's active skills for two seconds when a successful skill guard included ends. So he's decreasing his damage received and then he is going to be able to dis disable the target's active skills for two seconds with his pretty much homing missile. Uh, you can launch this out if you catch them flat-footed and nail them and pretty much knock out all of their skills and jump in for combos and things of that nature, which is really, really strong. But it is going to be a situation with that skill where you need to be very wary of when you're casting it. It does tend to whiff. Then, moving on to his S2. This is going to increase his attack by 30% for 7 seconds, with a 50% chance to ignore the target's guard. So, guard, bre guard break, and then more increase to attack, another really good skill for his S2. And then on his S3, he's going to get Hyper Armor, which is going to give him damage immunity and super armor, and this is an interrupt. So basically what that means is, as long as his feet are on the ground, then he can interrupt with this attack. So having that with Hyper Armor on it is really, really, really good. So... That all being said, the last thing I want to talk about before we move on and look at these skills completely is we're going to talk about the effect on his exclusive card, and that is going to be for this new finisher, and that is going to decrease damage received by 12% for 10 seconds upon using this attack. So after he uses this attack, he's going to give himself further damage decrease to his vulnerability, which is really, really good. Um... He, he, he is built for PvP. So, anyway guys, let's go ahead and move on and look at the skills more closely. 
So moving into the skills, the first thing I want to start with is the basic string for Boss Syndrome Orochi, which is actually really good and worth noting. So basically, once he has knocked them to the ground, the nice thing about his chain here is going to be that he actually, on the first swing, it has an OTG, which is an off the ground, which is really, really good. So that is something to keep in mind. On his S1, basically that's his homing missile. You can throw that out from any distance and it's going to hit a flat-footed enemy. So not much to say there, very good. On his S2, it is another what looks to be full screen attack. It is an off the ground. So another really strong skill for mobbing and bossing. On to the S3. The S3 is going to be kind of a teleporting type move. So as you can see here, it's pretty much full screen for the most part and it is also an off the ground. The next thing I want to compare here is going to be the card sets, so that's what we're going to do. Let's first take a look at the Orochi set and you'll be able to see the damage on the screen. All of these are going to have been taken without having any option cards that's equipped. So what you're seeing here is raw damage output using the set card and the character skills. Next up is going to be Akane and another really good card set overall and probably one of the ones that I would lean more towards if you're thinking about what cards you should be equipping to him. Next up is Leah, which is definitely my favorite set for him. So after comparing all of these card sets, I would say a Leah set is probably going to be the best card for him most times. And then obviously the Salt card set itself, the Tekken set, which as you can see kind of brings up the rear here. So. Let's go ahead and move on and talk about Boss Syndrome Orochi in mobbing. Against mobs, Orochi is interesting. So he kind of suffers from similar issues that the original Orochi had suffered from with mobbing, and that is that his skills really aren't designed, I don't believe, for this type of function specifically. Now, he isn't bad at it whatsoever. He's actually quite good with it. The issue is, is his XY axis on these skills isn't necessarily the best, so he is going to struggle to group mobs very well sometimes. It's kind of a 50-50 scenario with him, where he sometimes will, is specifically if you're in Reviving Hell's Dungeon, if he's looking at a wave such as the ones with the ever-annoying stun robots, where he casts something and one or two of them will kind of split off to the sides. So. He's he's interesting in that regard, so definitely doesn't have the best XY axis on some of these skills. It's not very forgiving, but overall, because of his amazing damage output and his ability to just spam finishers, he just completely runs through it. So it doesn't really make a huge impact on him at the end of the day, but it is something worth noting. But overall... I think that Boss Syndrome Orochi is very strong at mobbing. Is he going to be the best mobber out there? I don't believe so, but he does definitely get it done. So my my opinion of him is he's probably going to just be a hard 4 out of 5 at mobbing. Moving on now to bossing. This is the part of the review where Orochi sort of falls off, and it isn't because he can't he can't fight these bosses. The issue with Orochi is this. He doesn't have the versatility like a lot of the other characters in the game do, such as a lot of the Seven Knights as a good example that we just reviewed. Uh, he doesn't have the ability to just go in as a generalist against some of these immortals and get the job done. He doesn't go into guild raid and donate much to your team. He doesn't have a ton of versatility with a lot of different modes. But in the modes that he is really good in, he is absolutely nuts. So in Reviving Hell's Dungeon, as a kind of example, as you can see here on the screen, he does juggle bosses very, very well. Although at times, like on his on his finisher, he will cast it and they'll still be able to move around. So he'll kind of lose his cornering with them if you're just trying to juggle them out of existence. But Overall, in Reviving Hell's Dungeon, he will definitely be a very strong pick. Um, now, moving on to kind of other modes that he might actually be usable for, I did take him into as much as I possibly could given the weak rotation of bosses that we had for this week, and there really weren't a whole lot of things that he was very strong in where I felt like I should even bother giving you guys any footage on it. For instance, I took him in against Immortal Moth, 
didn't do much of anything, which I knew he wasn't going to, but I figured for posterity's sake I would try it out. As a clock stopper for Immortals, he just isn't going to be able to do that very well because they're going to be pretty much soaking his ability to gain his PG as fast as he would like, which is really where a lot of his strength comes from in PvE. So, yeah, I mean, in things like the Hall of Elements, for example, which you'll see here, he is going to be an absolute beast and do a ton of damage at one time. Keep the clock stopped, which this is probably one of his premier PvE boss situations right now. And I don't want to dock him a ton and give him a little bit of room to grow in the future because I do think that as the game ages, we are going to be getting more content where he will be useful in the long run. But as it sits right now, I think he's kind of in an awkward position where with a lot of the in-game bossing content, he just isn't a natural first pick. And that is what's going to hold him back a little bit. You basically have to think to yourself against things like Immortals and things of that nature, is he going to ever really make it into my top six for any reason? And I don't see that for him yet. I think that in the future he has a lot of room to grow and a lot of potential there, but for now I have to judge him based on what is in the game and there's just not a whole lot of PvE bossing content that I think you're probably going to inevitably end up picking him for. That is why, for now, I am going to be giving him a 3.75 out of 5. So, let's move on to PvAI, where he is actually nuts. In player versus AI, Orochi is just, he's a boss. <laughs> I it just, it's nuts. The fact that, so I basically, I was able to take him into, I would say, like, 5 or 6. Uh, PVAI mode battles, and really with Orochi, he just bullies things. It, he doesn't care. I mean, you better have damage reflection of some sort, because otherwise you're pretty much just going to get hammered. Um, at the end of the day, he is a PvP character, and when it comes to PvP, he's a hard 5 out of 5. When it comes to PVAI, I, I'm not. I'm just going to spoiler alert now, he's a hard 5 out of 5. He just is a bully. <laughs> he's a big bossy bully. Um, so, Boss Syndrome Orochi, it's no secret, of the two characters, he was definitely the one with PvP in mind when they designed him, and you can tell, you can tell from his cores, you can tell from his skills, he is made for PvP. Which, for those of you who love PvP, he is going to do wonders for you, probably be banned 9 times out of 10, unless you're staring down a Christmas Goro, at which point you might want to be careful and ban that. Um, but yeah, overall, he is very, very, very good. And I think that at the end of the day, a lot of people might have freaked out about the release of these characters. And I think it was a little premature. I think that these characters are extremely powerful. But I don't think that they are characters that are busting the game in any way. And I definitely don't think that Orochi takes the meta to a whole new level. I think he basically just is more of the same as it pertains to the Seven Knights. Maybe even a kind of slight step below them. But overall, it's pretty darn close. So yeah, 5 out of 5 for his PVAI score. And all of this accumulates to a 4 out of 5. So there you have it, guys. That is going to be the review for the Boss Syndrome version of Orochi. I will say that the 4 out of 5 that I gave him is... I could have easily gone lower. And I was very back and forth on whether or not I wanted to actually give him a 3.75. And the reason at the end of the day is going to be his lack of versatility in PvE. It's no secret at this point, and we knew this kind of going in when we saw the leaks for his skills. We had pretty much assumed he was going to be a PvP-oriented character, and he very much so is. If this review was considering PvP, then I think that he would definitely be a 4.5 um, or a 4.25. But as it sits right now, I think that he is a soft 4. He has room to grow in the future, but just because he's such a powerhouse. I think one thing that is bears mentioning here that does hold him back quite a bit from his PvE potential is going to be the fact that he is a balance. Being a balance type character, he does not be able to partake in some of the buffs from characters like a Orochi Iori, which would be very beneficial when you're trying to put together team comps for certain dungeons and things like that. So you pretty much have to either run him or you need to run Shane as the leader in order to buff him to his full potential in whatever 
boss mode you're doing. So overall, I think that he is, it's fair to say he's a four, although I do think that there's definitely a case to be made to go lower, but I wanted to just spot him the four based on future potential down the road. I think that there is a chance that he could grow in popularity in PvE at some point as more content is released. So that is going to be the video, guys. For those of you who never stay to the end, you might want to stay to the end. I'm just saying, I tend to add things at the end of the videos that sometimes I don't think much many people notice. I think they think that it's just going to be the countdown with Chrysalid and then they're not going to have anything in there, but I, I do tend to add things. So there's tons of Easter eggs throughout my channel at the end of my videos if you guys have not checked out some of those. Um, but anyway, it's not every video, but some of them. Maybe it's this one too. Who knows? Anyway, guys, that is going to be the review. Let me know your thoughts down below if you're thinking about pulling for him. I think that if you are a PvP-oriented character fighter, that you should definitely go for him. Um, if he is somebody you want for your PvP team, he will definitely, definitely be a boon there. Uh, if you're somebody who wants him for PvE, then you might want to use some caution and uh, rethink that. I think that a much better investment for PvE would definitely be Rugal by a large, large margin. However, I will say it basically is going to come down to the luck. I wouldn't have this here if I weren't going for Rugal. So, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, guys, like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I will see you in tomorrow's video. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your weekend, and peace. Continue.